Welcome. In uh, this little video I would like to talk about size and evil. <laughs> so as everybody knows who loves stories, movies or conspiracy theories, generally the evil is faceless, nameless and large, huge. But this is actually correct. Is it so that because a government or a company is big it is by definition evil? And what makes it evil? Do the people make it evil? Is there an evil mastermind at work or not? So I would like to go a little bit into the mechanisms of evil and size. So if you have a very small group of people, it doesn't matter whether it's a company for profit or not for profit or just any type of community, there will arise a certain organization uh, within that group. Even if it's an anarchistic group, a certain form of organization will arise naturally. And what we find is that if you have a relatively uh, small group for up to 20 people, it is generally there is one person who kind of takes the lead or has most initiative within the group who will in a way dominate what the group will do or think or how they will act. This is the natural leader, the alpha male or the alpha female, who uh, does that. And this process of there being one person who is the source of inspiration um, can of course be a lot larger. Many people can be inspired by uh, the Dalai Lama or by Christ, but this person is no longer really personally in control of the group or everything which is being done. In his or her name. And um, this is often a, a, a big misconception. So uh, if we look at the recent problems there have been in Syria, Assad is held accountable for things which are, have been done by or may have been done by his regime. But can a person be accountable if they have no power, no influence and no control? And this is a very fundamental question we should ask ourselves. Who is accountable, truly? And what you see is that the human ability to control, to keep tabs on things, to inspire people, uh, to bind people to their will, is limited. As I said, usually it's limited to a group of about 20 people. Um, I myself have, have worked as a manager, working with groups over 100 people. And already then you start to feel that the control is slipping. You don't know everybody as well as you would like. You can't monitor all the processes which are going on in everybody's lives as well as you like. But usually you can manage to kind of keep tabs on what is going on with the group as a whole. How everybody's functioning, how the uh, interactions are within the group. So you can more or less mold and shape the group to your will. And I'm told that the really great leaders, the great managers can manage groups up to 700 people and really act as the focus point for all those people, be truly the leader for such a group. But if it goes beyond that size, no longer is a single human mind and a single human body able to really control such an organization. And then it becomes very open, because it is no longer a human influence which is governing the group, but it will be energetic influences which will work on the group, and there might be yeah, various types of energy which get involved in using such a group, and also the system which is set up on a sociological level yeah, starts to uh, imprint its own strengths and weaknesses upon the group. So what we see if, uh, when the group gets too large for one person to really control and govern, that usually the government of such a group becomes distributed. So instead of there just being one monarch, uh, this is literally mono, one archon first or leader, one leader, um, you get a group of leaders. And usually uh, it's a select group, an oligarchy, oligo. Uh, uh, few um, and archon again leaders. 
So you get a few leaders or a group of leaders who will lead such a group. And the process differs entirely from a monarchy. So from a monarchy, one person feels responsibility. This is my group, these are my people, I have to take care of them. So usually the monarch feels a very heavy responsibility, a very big stress in dealing with the demands of hundreds of people. And at the a point where you get a management team, a group of managers, the managers start to bond together. They feel that we are the leaders, we are the person in power, and they start connecting with each other more than with the people they govern. And the same happens within a government. When people feel very close to the other people within the government, they feel close to the other members of the party, but less close to the very people who have elected them, who they represent. And this process is called the in-group and out-group phenomenon in psychology. And what you see is that within the group, to form a stable, healthy group, um, they want to harmonize, they want to become like the other members of the group, they want to feel supported by the other members of the group, the group has to be harmonious. So they tend to go along to make compromises, to fit in, and to make a group strong and functional. And um, when this process starts happening, they go into an illusion. Uh, that in a way the group is their world, it becomes their universe rather than the larger universe um, they were in or the, and the other members of the universe, so the electorate or the people who work for the company, they become like anonymous, they become faces, they become numbers, they become names, but they're no longer really interacted with as persons and um, they're slowly but surely dehumanized while only the persons in the in-group stay human and within the in-group because it's a very isolated uh, little circle um, often strange ideas and strange uh, impulses can really blossom because there's not a counter force not a force of reason um, which counteracts them and this group pressure this peer pressure can be very strong and many people succumb to it. So they slowly start moving away from the people who brought them there to that position and become attuned to the other leaders um, and become one of them. So they become a little bit yeah, um, um, transformed into a member of an elite rather than being a member of the people. And this, unfortunately, is just a human process. We are herd animals by nature, and we are social animals by nature. And no matter how we try not to, this is uh, something which we will do subconsciously. So this is one of the weaknesses of such a system. Another thing which happens if a group is, gets very large, um, it needs some kind of structure. And usually to um, organize something, we go to Aramanic principles. So in other videos I talked a little bit about the different cosmoses, which are the divine cosmos, the unfallen cosmos, the nature cosmos, Lucifer cosmos, and the Aramanic cosmos. So the Aramanic cosmos has the lowest vibration, but it's also the most stable of cosmoses. It is the cosmos of law, of rules, of regulations. So to create structure, we often create a hierarchy, we create rules, we create laws, this is forbidden, this is allowed, this is your duty, uh, so that everything is very clear, everything is very simple. But by creating all these rules and laws, we also create little boxes, little prisons, which people cannot escape from, they cannot act outside of this set of rules. And this, by its very nature, can be guiding or focusing their efforts and their energies, but it can also be frustrating their efforts and their energy. So this aromatic structure, which tends to grow and grow uh, as we organize in such a way, is also uh, by many persons perceived as, uh, as evil, while it is not by nature so, but it is a lower vibration than many people are used to. So it might not be very good for the spiritual development. 
So we are left with a question like, gosh, if groups grow and they need harmonic structures to function, to stabilize themselves, they need protocols and laws, and people start becoming leaders instead of normal people, are we then doomed? Is the only possibility to keep companies small? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. If we look back a little bit in history at the Second World War, so uh, Germany and Japan were the aggressors. And after the victory of the Allies, the Allied nations also tried to analyze what made the Japanese people uh, start this imperial urge, what made the German people start this imperial urge. And they found out that it was mainly due to the effect of large mega corporations which influenced politics and politicians and then lobbied and this so corrupted the, the government and the, the people and the media that eventually yeah the evil spread it's yeah uh, started wars and they started to create in a way slave races to serve them and the allies realized gosh we can't allow such huge mega companies to govern uh, to govern us whether through so-called democratic means or not so one of the first things they did in uh, uh, the uh, after war germany and japan is they cut up all the mega companies forbade the companies from being too big they had to be smaller they had to be more human and um, to prevent them from starting another world war, from preventing them from spreading their evil and uh, doing it to others. And, well, as we all know, that Japan and Germany flourished in the uh, after-war era. Unfortunately, the Allies um, were very good at, yeah, in a way, enforcing their vision upon others, but not so successful or desiring to enforce that vision upon themselves, because within America especially, mega companies kept on existing, kept on controlling politics and yeah, kept on furthering their own agenda, which is not necessarily very beneficial for humankind or the planet. So we are faced with a situation where the, the danger of big groups, of big companies, is very much realized, it's very much known, but Unfortunately, we are not in a position anymore to change anything about it because we are not the leaders. And if we try to become the leaders, we become like them. So this is a very nasty catch-22 in which we find ourselves. Um, but also not all big institutions are necessarily evil. But what does happen is that if humans are no longer able to control and to oversee something, other powers step in. So these can be egregores or deities or angels or a group consciousness which emerges from the group. But always when there is a group which is too large for one person to be governed, so basically over 700 people, there will be such a communal entity which is inspiring and leading um, the collective. And um, these powers are also selectable by us. We can decide for ourselves what should guide us, what should lead us, uh, but we have to also live by their, their rule, by their inspiration for them to stay with us and to keep on guiding us. And 